Powell had no doubt where mass migration and race relations legislation were leading. Only months before he had visited the United States, race hate seemed to be tearing the country apart. In Chicago and Detroit, Powell witnessed violence at first hand. A leader of his people, a teacher of all people, has fallen. The man who fought against violence is by violence destroyed. Just two weeks before Powell's speech, the civil rights leader Martin Luther King was murdered by a white racist. Thousands were injured and tens of thousands were arrested in rioting that followed. America seemed to be on the brink of ethnic war. He began to feel that in 10, 15 years' time, Britain would simply become the carbon copy of the United States, reproducing exactly the same sort of problems that the United States was facing at the time. And I think any politician, if this is how he saw the situation, he owed it to himself and to his country to say, look, this is what I feel, this is what I fear. Only by halting immigration, Powell argued, could Britain be saved from Armageddon. In these circumstances, nothing will suffice but that the total inflow for settlement should be reduced at once to negligible proportions, and that the necessary legislative and administrative measures should be taken without delay. Powell ended his speech with a line from the Roman poet Virgil, which summed up his deep sense of anxiety. It is one of the most misquoted lines in British political history. As I look ahead, I am filled with foreboding. Like the Roman, I seem to see the river Tiber foaming with much blood. How many among his listeners knew what the Tiber was or where that reference came from? Doesn't matter. He got the image. Even those people who don't fully understand what you're saying get the point because they get it in their stomachs, in their hearts, rather than in their heads. This extraordinary figure who is very cerebral, I mean, you know, but who, when, he's used, when he speaks about race, is not being a cerebral as all that. He is speaking from the gut, too. An Englishman's gut. Mr. Powell received a considerable amount of applause for what he said. There were uh, members of parliament and candidates and leading members of the Conservative Party there uh, who in no way uh, indicated any dissent uh, from what, what Mr. Powell was saying uh, at that time. He left the hotel and went to the home of his friend, Clement Jones, whose wife Marjorie had been looking after Powell's two daughters for the day. My mother had got the speech. My father had brought it home uh, from the office of the Express and Star. They'd been unable to use it that day because Powell had put an embargo on it. But of course, when my mother read it, she, she was shocked. And it was the sight, I think, of words like grinning piccaninnies is clearly what upset my mother most of all. She said that there was no way that she could ever spend time with Enoch Powell again. My mother handed over the girls and Powell said, well, that looks like the end of a very good friendship. And my mother, my mother said yes. So it was a real defining moment for my mother and father. Uh, I think this was the moment when they had to make a stand. Uh, it hurt them. Uh, I know that uh, it probably hurt the Powells as well, but that was the moment in, in family history, a searing moment. <laughs> Meanwhile, footage of the speech was dispatched south. 
the bomb that Powell had primed was about to explode. The tape plus the extracts from the speech, which uh, I'd marked up for them, was put on a train to ITN in London. Who, of course, ran it big. That evening, Powell's shadow cabinet colleagues watched in horror. The black man will have the whip hand over the white man. They were outraged by what they felt was his racist tone. Some threatened resignation if Powell wasn't sacked. Having had no warning of the speech, many felt betrayed. Ted Heath was furious with Enoch Powell for saying something entirely different from what had been agreed. He would have acted even if the other colleagues had not insisted, but their insistence was absolutely in line with his own, his own feeling. I dismissed Mr. Powell from the shadow cabinet because I believed that his speech was inflammatory and liable to damage race relations in this country. Heath had acted quickly. Powell was sacked on Sunday the 21st of April, just a day after the speech. Two days later, a thousand dockers marched to Parliament to protest against what they called the victimization of Powell. White working people, traditionally core Labour supporters, were now backing a radical right-wing Tory. Meat porters from Smithfield Market in London added their voice to the growing chorus of support. How can you fetch more in when you haven't got enough housing, enough schools, the National Health Service is going to put over them? This is why we're doing it, because Enoch Powell spoke the truth and he's been sacked for it. This race relation issue goes well beyond the field of politics and trade union matters. This is an issue of national importance, as important to us as Dunkirk. Oh, what is the issue about? The issue is not coloured immigration, but the denial of free speech to us, the English, and our own land. Yeah. 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 Yeah.